Richard Groves. I'm the regional coordinator here for the Local 18 um, Operating Engineers Apprenticeship and Training Program. We teach people how to operate heavy equipment of all types, sizes, kinds. So it's a four year uh, apprenticeship program, and at the end of four years, our apprentices that we uh, bring into the program um, become journey people. So this building was constructed, um, it was completed in February of 2020, and um, the shop was completed in February of 2021. The property, we've actually been here at this property since 1973, but the new addition just happened here um, within the last uh, few years. We have 14,000 square feet here with uh, admin offices and the classroom space that we have. We have an additional 12,000 feet out in the shop that we have and then out in the all weather building we have 28,000 square feet under roof out there uh, to do indoor training with. We have an online application process at uh, local18training.com and you can get online. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we take applications. Uh, once we receive those applications, we try to get everybody tested within a one month uh, time period. Um, our applicants come into the computer room, uh, we do, it's online. Um, also prior to doing the online testing, we have a test prep day for those students that um, feel like they'd like to come in and do a little test prep prior to that. We'll do a test prep uh, prior to our, our online uh, test. Um, after our applicants take the test, if they get a passing grade on the test, we'll interview everyone that passes the test. Uh, me and a contractor with Local 18 will sit down with the uh, applicants and talk to them about getting into the operating engineers and what their heart and desire is uh, to get into the program here. Um, after uh, we interview them, um, we'll take their test score and their interview score plus any bonus points they might have for uh, applying in previous years, combine them, and then we bring those uh, students in um, to a pre-admission orientation. Uh, this is a three-week uh, training uh, process that we go through prior to anybody going out onto any jobs or anything. During that three weeks, um, they'll do an OSHA 10 STP class. We'll have a forklift class that they'll go through and some crane training. So during that three weeks, they'll spend about a week in the classroom. They'll spend about a week in the shop learning to do basic maintenance on equipment and how to check the equipment out properly before they operate it. And then we'll spend about a week in the field um, learning how just to do basic operations with the equipment that's out there. Um, at the end of that three weeks, if the applicants maintain a 70% score, then they can um, be a, get indentured into the program and they're allowed to put their uh, card in the union hiring hall up in Columbus to be dispatched out to work with one of our contractors. So this is Manny Gutierrez. He's the director of operations um, over the state. And this isn't the only training site in the state of Ohio. Um, we have three more sites besides this one at Logan. So. Yes, uh, we have uh, Northeast Ohio, which is our Richfield site, which is between Akron and Cleveland. We have our Northwest uh, Region 2, Northwest Ohio, which is in Signet, which is just south of Bowling Green. Southwest Ohio is Miamisburg, just right around Dayton, Cincinnati area. The nice thing about the four training facilities is that way every site is pretty much the same, same amount of equipment, same amount of training. The only difference between this one and the other ones is this one has our dedicated maintenance technician program. One of the nice things about this program is Local 18 is statewide. So we have roughly around 16,000 members in the state. So whenever you drive down the interstates and the highways around Ohio, any equipment you see on the side of the road, Local 18 operators. Any mechanics working on that equipment? Local 18 operators. Some of these dealerships, the Caterpillar dealerships, the Columbus Equipments, Rico, all those, local 18 operators. Also, any of the mechanics you see for the companies, like the Kokosins, the ES Wagners, the Rulins, 
those are all also local 18 operators. But then there's the, the mechanics portion of it is the maintenance technician. And of course, then you have your operator per version of it. So that's the nice thing about this facility here. We have, this is the newest addition to our, the newest uh, upgraded training site that we have in the state of Ohio. And actually we opened doors on this about two years ago. So this is mainly dedicated to help out our maintenance technicians. With the operating engineers, um, we do a lot of our training in the winter time. Um, and this is our all weather building. We have 28,000 square feet under roof here. And um, apprentices and journeymen can come in here and uh, do their training. Um, the dirt goes down forever. Uh, we can run about 12 pieces of equipment in here at a time. And we host a multitude of classes. Right now we got a skid steer class going on here today, um, but we also do a Brock training, which is using remote control equipment. We will do a grader class, um, host that in here, a paving class, a milling class. So we, we host a lot of different classes for our um, membership to come in and get trained on new pieces of equipment. So right now they're having a competition. They got to carry that piece of pipe on the forks there without losing it as they come down through the whoop de doos here and back around and they're timing themselves right now. It's just something that they've got going on here today. The first couple days they work on uh, being able to couple and uncouple different attachments, um, digging excavations out, being able to carry grade in the excavations. Uh, learning the proper technique of loading and unloading uh, the heavy equipment off the trailer here. Operate heavy equipment outside as well too. We have our GPS class going on this week and they will learn how to operate the uh, equipment um, effectively to make sure that they understand how to get through the different pages on the GPS equipment, how to set it up and operate the equipment out here. Yes, it's a three day class to learn how to do the proper adjustments, how to do their own little adjustments on the field Say for example, maybe there's something that wasn't planned on the GPS uh, project, but it's a quick add-on. They learn how to do the quick add-ons and how to properly do it in the field. And hopefully, like I said, biggest thing is efficiency. That's one thing that we, we sell. Our thing is our, we want our members skilled and trained, and that's part of the training that they do. A lot of these are apprentices, but we do a lot of training for our journey people, our journey men and the journey women. They also come to our facilities constantly to keep their skills sharp and honed. That way they're more valuable to the contractor and more efficient. So out here today, uh, this gentleman's working on CDL training and uh, all of our apprentices in their first year have to get their CDL uh, license. So we do a lot of 
training with the CDL, the commercial driver's license. Um, not only do we do that for first year apprentices, but any member that would like to get their CDL license, we will help them to obtain uh, their CDL. We have a, a CDL theory class that we host, and then after that, um, they can come down, um, get their permit, and we'll get them in the truck uh, so they can go do the CDL pre-trip and to do the range part of it is what he's working on right now uh, to do the alley dock parking and then we also get them out on the road so they can demonstrate their uh, driving skills out there once we get them ready uh, we'll take them down to uh, Piketon to the vocational school down there and let them take their uh, CDL test one of the so. things the contractors um, requested of us from our apprentices years ago to make it more valuable and more more of an asset for their pro, for the wherever they work is if they can get their CDLs. So we've it's been and since uh, 1996, every apprentice has to have their CDL by the end of their first year. And of course, the nice thing about it is we do all the training on site. So long as you pass it on your first time, so long as you're well prepared the way we train you, you should be able to get your CDL for less than $100 through us. Any one of our apprentices, any one of our members. So that's one thing we're very proud of. We're proud of our training program, our safety, and how we help our members and our apprentices get a valuable asset in their pocket or something for them to keep that no matter what, that's always a value for any company you go to is if you have your CDL. Doesn't mean you have to be a Billy Rig truck driver all the time. It's just nice that it makes you just that much more versatile. And that's one of the big things that we do, which we, uh, like to preach about this program is and to our members is be as versatile as you can be learn as much as you can that just adds more value it gives you more opportunity to work and that way so hence this site we have the gps cranes i mean gps equipment the excavators the dozers we have our skid steer classes those are mainly for safety but also technique and of course we have our cranes that we do our we do all our load charts all the safety and of course we saw the classroom a little earlier where you have all the that's what they were covering was learning how to do the load charts, how to do everything properly. So we are very proud of our program, what we have and what we've established. We never settle. We always want to try to learn more. And that way our members, all of our apprentices and our union members can be ahead of the curve. So that way they are valuable employees. Um, I'm standing in our crane lot right now. Uh, one of the things that the operating engineers covers is the cranes. Um, we help our operators get their, uh, become uh, CCO operators, certified crane operators. Uh, we have lattice booms, hydraulic cranes, small hydraulics. We have the overhead crane in the shop there that we work with. So any type of uh, crane license, um, we can help our members uh, be able to obtain them. and. Again, just make them more valuable to uh, the contractors that they're working for. We also uh, have a forklift uh, course out here. Um, all of our first year apprentices have to be able to get uh, past the industrial forklift. That's what uh, Rose is working on out there right now um, with the industrial. And then we also have the telehandler forklifts as well too. Um, but they have to be able to uh, demonstrate their ability with those um, and pass the test on them. So. so behind me, we're operating the GPS dozers again. Um, they'll be working on building pads out here, using the GPS to build pads. The slope on back out behind the dozer, they'll actually go through and bench uh, or cut benches into that slope. They'll push the slope back up. They'll have that slope at different grades. Uh, out here, they're working on cutting a V-ditch as well too, um, being able to cut the V-ditch uh, using the GPS uh, system and on the dozer as well also. So a lot of this is pretty much supplemental where they're, they're, they're also building road beds. So that way, the biggest thing when road construction or any construction is water, you gotta get the water away. So. It's critical when we're building the road beds, they know how to do, build them properly. That way water runs off at the right direction. And then of course, that a good sub base leads to a better road, hence our highways. The potholes that you spot, uh, where it's breaking in the road, a lot of that is water issues. So by learning how to do it properly, we can be preventive with it, and hopefully it reduces those issues. So right now we're in our break room. Um, this is where apprentices come in for their lunch. 
uh, here. Uh, this room here will hold about 50 people in here and we also do lunches for our mechanics um, because they do travel around the state. When they come in, we'll take care of their lunches. One of the things that we changed a couple years ago is that we used to do in-person applications uh, once a year for two weeks, and then uh, which was which was fine before, but it was always at the end of January, beginning of February. We switched that up now to where you can apply online at local18training.com, and of course at that website you can apply year-round. The process goes: you apply. Then of course we get the we get the notification that, that the new person has applied. We'll contact that new person about a test, scheduling them for a test. And the test is equivalent to an ASFAB. It's mathematics, a little bit of reading, um, spatial visualization, and the best way to explain that is Jenga blocks. And that's all it is, like what block is touching what. And what's the other one that's on there? Math, visual. Reading comprehension. Okay. And mechanical concepts. Mechanical concepts. And all mechanical concepts is if this gear is turning this way, what direction is the other gear turning in? And like I said, it's just like an ASFAB for military entrance. But it's, uh, that's the only time that the person pays to come and take the test. It is an online time test, and it costs $20 to take the test. Now, upon passing, we invite the people that passed to come in for an interview. The interview process consists of one person from an op the operating engineers and the second person from the contractor side. So that way, us as instructors or coordinators, whoever's doing the interview, we're trying to see if this would be a good, good apprentice, a great asset to the program, a great member to this union. And then of course, the contractor side is looking at, is this person gonna be a reliable person for me? Are they gonna show up every day? Are they gonna do as they're asked for their, for their position? So, and then from there they go into it, we, we score them from their test and their interviews and the highest scores come in. So since we're taking applications year round, the high score, so some person could be number one at one time, then someone else comes in and test, or two people come in, they drop to number three. But anyway, that list constantly fluctuates. And when there's a need, we'll pull from the top of that list and those are the people we bring in. So, go ahead. Okay. So. As the coordinator, I get to travel around. I cover, my region covers 24 counties here in Southeast Ohio. And I'll go into school districts, into schools, vocational schools. Um, I've had, I've went into an English class before. The English teacher thought it was good for her class to go in here um, about different trades. So I'll always go in and do these uh, speaking engage, engagements. Um, I always like to let our applicants know or the people that are wanting to come into the operating engineer, what, what what am I looking for, for to be a good applicant? Um, and I always get to tell these students, um, the first thing they're going to have to have to become an operating engineer is their high school diploma or GED. Um, that's a minimum, uh, one of our minimum standards. Uh, they have to have a driver's license in order to uh, get into the operating engineers because they're going to have to dr drive from job site to job site, so they got to be able to get there. Uh, Another thing I have is um, no felony on their record in the past seven years. So they can't have any um, uh, felonies on there in the last seven years that would show up if we ran a background check on them. And the other one is being able to get a CDL permit. Uh, that permit, um, it's once they become 18 years old, they can go down to the BMV, uh, pick up a book, or we have them here, they read the book, and they got to be able to get their permit. And one of the things that would hinder someone from getting their CDL license would be uh, DUI. Um, and the, uh, you know, that would hinder them from getting their uh, permit. And the next thing is uh, no drugs. Um, we do drug testing when they come into pre-admission orientation and our contractors will do drug testing. So what that does, um, when, I, when I write them out on the board and I'm asking those students, I write them out there on the board and I always, always like to come back through at the end of it and put a triangle um, past all of it and say, now you can see um, that window for me to be able to accept applicants becomes very small um, to be able to get good applicants in here um, with the operating engineers. But we're gonna be looking for all of that stuff um, through the application process. Um, 
if people can um, pass through that window right there, they have a good chance of having a, a great career um, in the operating engineers. We have excellent benefits. Um, we start out at uh, $20.19 an hour for our first year apprentices. And that is if they're not operating a piece of mobile equipment. If they do happen to land a seat and a skid steer or a forklift um, or an articulating truck, which many of them do, um, there's a $4.10 an hour raise on top of that. So that'll put them up to about $24 an hour and change. Uh, if they apprentice comes in, goes through all of her training and keeps up with it, and that first year when they get all of the requirements met, they become a second year apprentice, they get a 10% increase on their wages. So there'd be another $4.10. And that would continue on through the apprenticeship until they graduate out. And our journey people right now are making $40.19 underneath the heavy highway agreement that we have right now. So um, it is a very good uh, wage. There's also, we got good insurance as far as health insurance um, and a retirement plan. We have a pension plan put in there. Uh, we have a safety and education fund that uh, we contribute to, and they, uh, our apprentices, you know, when they come here to the training site, uh, our training is recognized by the Department of Labor. We have articulation agreements with different colleges. They will earn 39 college credits in the four years that they're here um, with the training program, um, absolutely free. And all of the training here is absolutely free. They can come in here, it's, the membership is paying for every hour a member works. It's part of our uh, fringe benefit package. A little bit of that money comes back our way and that's what this is all paid for. There's no uh, local taxes paying for any of this, no state dollars, no federal dollars of any kind is paying into this. This is paid for 100% by the membership. Um, the way I like to always so. state it is, this is paid for the members by the members. And that's what's great about this program. We're very proud, and like he was stating too, we do not take any state or federal monies, period. This is all member funded. And like I said, we are very proud to have four facilities around the state. And like he stated too, the, wage, the wages are great. And of course, the apprentices' wages are based off a journeyman's, journeyman's wages. So they start at 50% of the $40 and change. Cents, yep. 40, 19, and of course, and then you work with 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, so you become a full-fledged journey person after your four-year program. We require, um, in order to graduate this program, you need to have a minimum of 640 hours training here at the site during your registered required classes. You need to meet your, your uh, upgrades, which we like to, that's where we like to get our apprentices diversified, where they learn different machines and they have to be proficient on different machines. So it can't just be the same thing and you go through, you have to learn different machines completely different from each other. So that way you're well versed when you go out in the field and you could do very well. The, like I said, the pay is great. Our insurance is great also. We do also have our, our pension. Nowadays, a lot of people don't talk about pensions because there's not too many offered anywhere. We are very proud of our pension because it's, it's maintained by our membership, by the people that are elected in our offices and our union. And they have done a great job in our, in our program with our, insur with our pension, where we're overfunded. Last I heard, I think we're overfunded at 119%, which is great. Our pension is very solid and we're very proud of it. And also, thus, like he said, everybody plays into the, also, and that comes on the back end. It does not come out of the, the apprentice's wages or the journeyman's wages. That is bargained separately. So no matter what their pay is their pay, they do not have to pay for the insurance out of that pay which is great. And the education and safety fund, every year we give away scholarships for any member that applies. Any, uh, if they have any children or spouses, the spouse could apply as long as the member's in period, and the, their children could apply between the ages of 18 to 26 for our scholarship fund. Last year, I think we gave away over 3.2 million in scholarship funds. So, and that's for, to use that any kind of training that you want. If it goes to, to the benefit of the trade, they get more received in their scholarship fund. So that is something nice that we offer continuously to all our members mm -hmm. by the members. So that's about all I wanted to toss in, unless you got some more. Well, um, there is a $20 application fee that we didn't talk about yet. So when 
uh, people do apply online. Like I say, they go to local18training.com. They can apply online. Uh, and then when they come in here to test, we, there is a $20 uh, cash um, fee that we charge to take the test. And that is really done through the place that we do our online testing through. That's not the operators getting that. That's, that's what they charge us. So it doesn't really cost on our members anything for people that come in to take the test. But after they pass the test, after that, everything else is, there's no charge. Okay.